today we're going to build something really exciting. We're going to build an AI agent using Grok AI, Slack, GitHub, and an automation platform called NAX. Imagine getting an AI feedback on your pull request. It will assess your code readability, security, and maintainability, and send the feedback directly to Slack. Before we get started, let's talk about how we're going to set everything up in NAX. So we have got our GitHub web trigger here. Whenever a new pull request is created, it fires up this workflow. Then we pass the pull request information like the PL title, description, and the files that are changed through this web book. The next step is to send this data to work here. There it will analyze the pull request for things like security and readability. Here in Grok AI, we have created a prompt that asks the AI to review the PR in a friendly developer-to-developer -to -developer tool. We don't want it to sound like a robot. I mean, we want the feedback to be clear and human-like, right? Once the review is done, we take the feedback and send it directly to Slack using the Slack mode. The message gets posted in a designated channel where the team can review it. Now, with this process, you will see the workflow unfold, right from the PR to the stack. Let's get started. Okay, so now, to get started, the first thing we have to do is to go get our PR details. So to do that, we have to create a node called GitHub. So let's search for a node GitHub. Mm, yeah, this is it. Now, this node will be running on ProCore. So this, the trigger, will actually be triggering this workflow. And it will be on pull request. If there is any PR that is being made to the before that we specify it to run this workflow. So let's look for on um, pro repairs, okay? Now, the next thing we have to do is to authenticate our GitHub with any it. So I've already created a credentials, right? But let me show you, if you would love to create, just click on creating your credentials, um, can either use this or this. So let's go with access token. Now, you need, this user will be your GitHub account username, right? Let's say, for example, this is my GitHub account, and this is actually my username. So this user will be Idris Sophie, which is my GitHub account username. Now, for the access token, you go to your settings, click on settings. Now, once you go to settings, you see um, developer settings, click on it. Then you can now go see your personal access token. This way you can generate tokens. So let's click on tokens. Yeah, so I've already created a token. I won't be creating another one, but to create yours, you can just click on generate token. Click on um, any of the token that you love to use, maybe specifically for your repo or for general use. Then once you're done creating a token, you can copy it and paste this on access token, then save, right? So for now, I will be creating any new credentials. I'll be using the one I already created. Now, once you're done authenticating with GitHub, let's go over to the repository owner. So click on that. Let's use by name. So for repository owner, I will still use uh, Reduce Sophie. Right? Then from list, yeah, let's use list. Let's choose uh, the repository that we're working with. So for this, I'll be working with this full stack app deployment repository. Now, the events that will trigger this workflow will be pull requests. There are different types of events we have here, but for this workflow, it's specifically for pull requests since we are trying to review a, a PR. So now the next thing to do is to test this workflow. Let's click on test tab. All right, let's create a pull request. Right, so let's check the workflow he should have run by now. Yeah, so due to the PR I made here, it successfully ran this uh, particular node, right? Now let's go back. For AI to be able to give feedbacks, AI needs some certain details. It needs to see if I you make changes to it needs to see your PR description, your PR titles, and all of that. So to do that, we actually need to pick out those details, right? You need to pick out these details from the details that GitHub sent here. 
Kitab saying it's a lot of details, all right? They're saying the lot. So we need to just pick out the necessary ones you are going to be using to get feedback from air. So let's go back, click on node. Now let's, the node you're going to be using here is set node. So click on that. So we're going to be picking out some of these details here. The first one we're going to be picking, let's go check. So we're going to be picking these details right here, right? So let's start with PR type, sir. Keki dads. Lampiris dates. Another one is PR auto. So let's copy this. Another one is this change file. So GitHub doesn't send the files directly. It doesn't attach it to the details, right? And so we are going to get these change files. So let's go over to the fortness from PR description. Copy that. Now the last one is PR number. Copy that in. Hiss it. All right. So let's start with PR number. Our PR number is this number right here. So you can just go to your input tab and select this number. You can search for the, um. Search for it and you just your GitHub trigger inputs and take it. So this is our PR number. And this one is our PR descriptions. Let's search for it. Description. Mm. All right, let's use this. These are PR description. Right, now the next one is auto. Sorry, this go. All right, so this is the auto. Now the last one, which is the PR title. So take that and paste it. Yeah. Now these are the fields that we'll be working with to get feedback from AI. And let's test these fields and move over to the next node. All right, so this works perfectly. Now let's go back to the next node. So the next node, we need to get our change files. If you remember, I said GitHub doesn't give details on these files, on these changed files. So we need to go get the changed file. So to do that, let's create a new node. So this is, uh, we're going to be using a HTTP node. All right, click on that. So for the URL, let's go copy this. Now, this is the URL that we'll actually be using. So let's copy that. So we're going to make some changes to this URL. So this URL needs our repository, full name, and also the pull request number, which is this pull request number we created here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to this set node. I'm going to be adding our repository full name to it so that it will be easier for us to get it. So let's go back to set node. Let's add another field. Let's call it repo. Okay, so let's get our repository full name. And directly under the input repo, you'll be seeing the full name. So take the full name and paste it here. Okay, let's test the step one more. Let's go back and attach it to this HTTP request. Now, I said that this API is, our URL is actually this, right? So, we're going to copy this and make some changes right there on any So, let's paste this to URL. If you see it, you'll be seeing um, red colors, right? So this input actually doesn't exist. We are going to change them with the input we have right here. So for the repository full name, which is the first one, we're going to remove this and we're going to be adding this, our repo full name. Okay. Now the second one is a pull request number. We're going to be removing this because this input actually doesn't exist. And we're going to be taking our pull request number. Let's paste it here. 
All right. Now let's try running this. Okay. So we got the details of our change file. Now the next thing we have to do is to extract the, this file name. We need to extract this file name and this file status. So to do that, let's go back. Let's create a node. I'm going to be using code to run this. So let's create if we code node, click on that. And the language you're going to be using is JavaScript. So, so you can leave it as JavaScript, or maybe if you're familiar with Python, you can use Python. But for here, I'm going to be using JavaScript, right? So I already have the node, the code. I'll just go and copy it and paste it. So let's copy this. What this code will be doing is to extract our file name and the status. So paste it and let's run this node. All right, so it has extracted the file name and the status. Let's go back. Now, the next thing to do is to send this to Grok AI. Grok AI will read the file and give its feedback. So to do that, let's click on this and search for HTTP request. Search for HTTP request, click on HTTP request. Now, the method we're going to be using is post. So for the URL, let me go copy it. So this is the URL we're going to be using. Let's copy that and paste it. This is actually Grok API URL. Now for the authentication, um, don't worry, I'm setting it on the header. So let's click on send headers. Let's copy this. So for content type, it will be application slash JSON. Uh, let's create two parameter. Just wait for application. So you can either use um, user field below or you can use JSON anymore you want. So let's go. The next one is authorization. That's first it. Now, by now, you should have generated your Grok API key. I just go to Grok Cloud. See this API key? Just click go there and click on create API key that you'll be using to work. The next thing is the body. So click on send body. Um, for a specified body, we're going to be using JSON. So I already have a JSON file. Let me go copy it and paste it. So this is my JSON file. Let's copy that. So this JSON file contains the prompt that I'm giving to the AI to give me feedback. So the prompt is saying, hey, could you review this PR, which is a PR title. Then some other fields you're going to be keying in, like our description our file which is that file we just formatted here and yeah so let's copy this let's copy this just so file copy that and let's go paste it we're going to be making some changes to it do right so for this this is our description this edit file dot item digital this is actually our pr description then this pr title so if you can go back to the sets node, right? See our PR title, you see our PR description. Now this third one is the formatted file that we gave here. So we're going to delete this, this one in red color. We're going to delete it, right? Now let's go collect. All right, sir. Now let's go paste the formatted file. Okay, now let's try running this. And it's from perfectly. So this is the response from AI. It says, I have taken a look at the PR. Overall, the changes to readme.md looks good. The wording is clear and concise, which is great for readability. I especially like how you have organized some of the sections to make it easier for new contributors to get started. One minor suggestion I have is to consider adding some headings or subheadings to break up the content a bit more. So this would make it, so, as you can see, AI is basically giving us feedback on our pull requests.
The last thing we have to do is to send this feedback to the Slack channel. So let's go back and create a new node. Now this node will be, let's search for Slack node. Close Slack. So we're sending a message. So we're going to look for the send, send a message action. Yeah, look at it. Send a message. And I've already created a new credential, so I won't be creating a new one. But in case you want to, if you can click on create new credentials, you can either use this or this, any ones, but let's go with access token. You can click on, so to get your access token credentials, you must have already created a Slack um, app. So when you go to your Slack app, you can now go to this auth and permissions. This will be your both um, user authentication token. So you have to copy this. This will be the token that you will be using. Copy it and paste it here, then save it to authenticate, right? Once you're done with that, you can go over to the next one. For the resources, we are actually using a message. For the operation we are sending, you are sending a message. Let's say we are sending it to a channel, right? Now we are going to be using the channel ID. So you can go to your Slack and copy your ID and paste. So let me go copy ID. Before that, this message text will be the content that you're getting from Group AI. So this is actually our content. We want to send it back to Slack. So you can take that content, put it in your message text, the paste your channel ID, and let's test the note. So I will copy my channel ID and paste this. So I've pasted my channel ID. Now let's try testing this node. Click on test. So as you can see, I've received a message immediately. Let's click on that. Uh, okay, and the message says, I've looked at the PR, the changes to readme.mdlose code and blah, blah, blah. So this is basically the feedback from AI. If you want it to be more specific or maybe you want to tell out the feedback to your own way, right? You can just go to that prompt and tell AI exactly what you want and it will give you that, right? So now this is our GitHub code reviewer. If there is any pull request or if anyone makes any pull request, it triggers this workflow. So this is the first, this is the trigger. Any pull request will trigger this workflow. Then it gets the specific details that will be needed to actually get the feedback from AI. Then once the feedback is generated by AI, the feedback will be sent to Slack. So this is so easy. This is very easy. This is something that you can integrate within minutes, right? Okay, one last thing before we leave. Let's change this workflow name, though it's not really necessary, but let's just change it. Let's call it a uh, GitHub code PR reviewer. Let's call it PR reviewer, right? Yeah. I've just automated the whole process. From the pull request review to the feedback sent straight to Slack. If you have any questions or ideas for future projects, just drop your comments below. I do love to hear from you. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and follow for more AI automation videos.